Well, Catherine, uh, welcome to the Rest and Recovery podcast. Uh, and it, it's great to uh, see you again. We met, you know, about a couple of weeks ago in, in Miami. Yes, uh, at the Biohacking Congress. Yes, yeah. that, was, that was fantastic. We were, I was so overwhelmed with uh, how interested people were in algae as a, as a great way to hack their nutrition and improve their longevity. And as your listeners will find out, uh, we're going to dig into some of those goodies today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as I mentioned, when we met, you know, I had discovered you all uh, a few years ago, as a matter of fact through uh, one of your partners in my friend, Tim Hip at RXR3 Recovery Lounge. And yes. um, it was funny enough that when we ran into each other, I was reminded I'd been back in there and had actually just grabbed some. So I was like, all right, this is just perfect timing. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are no coincidences in life, are there? <laughs> yeah, true, true. The, the universe orchestrates it perfectly for us. <laughs> yeah. so, so speaking of algae, people are gonna say, are you talking about that green stuff and uh, what is that and how is that important? Um, maybe first Can though, I... well, dig into like, how the heck did, does someone get into yeah. an algae business? Yeah. Well, I, I uh, like to tell people I didn't go looking for algae. It seemed to go looking for me and it certainly found me. Uh, and I'm glad I did. Um, I'm 11, 12, almost 12 years into it now. But um, just to let your community know, I'm I'm actually Canadian, um, but I've lived in Boston for 33 years. Okay. Um, but all my family's still in Canada, and I have an MBA in international business, and I had a corporate career, which was fine. And then um, 13 years ago, my younger sister developed breast cancer. I just want everyone to know she's completely healed, and we celebrate her being cancer free every That's year. Wonderful. She's seven years cancer free. Um, and as she was preparing for her chemotherapy, her oncologist, which in case people don't know, an oncologist is a cancer specialist. Um, so her oncologist recommended she change her diet to an alkaline diet because uh, they said it would help her heal. Now, this kind of recommendation wasn't from just a neighbor across the street or someone she knew from her health club. This is her, her cancer specialist. So she paid great attention to it, but she didn't know what it was. They didn't tell her what it was or why it was good for her. So the first call she made was to me. Although I have no, had no nutrition knowledge at all, no biology, nothing at the time. I was right. an MBA, but I'm a very good researcher. So I said, hey, I, I have no idea what this alkaline diet stuff is, but I will find out. And I did. It was pri primarily a plant-based diet because of the chlorophyll and the phytonutrients, which have been proven to help build your immune system. So I spent um, months digging around, reading books, uh, reading scientific papers, uh, made some recommendations for her, which she followed, and she did go through chemo and she completely healed, as I mentioned. But in the process of helping her, I started reading more about plant-based nutrition. Now you have to remember, this was 13 years ago and nobody was talking about plant-based nutrition. Now it's everywhere. So as I read how powerful this was for your health, um, I thought, man, someone needs to tell the rest of America about this. And I'm just a person of action and very passionate. So I, I had no idea how I was gonna do it, but I quit my corporate career. I went back to school because I didn't have time to get a nutrition certified nutrition degree. I got a co health coaching certificate okay. from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, also known as IIN. In yeah. New York. And I, when, I, when I went there, I was the second last class that was held live. It's all online now. But let me just tell you, there were 1600 people in my class. It was held at um, Avery Fisher Hall on the weekends, which is in Lincoln Center in New York City. And it was so exciting to be with 1600 people who were passionate like me about helping people be healthy. There were nurses and doctors and naturopaths and, and yoga instructors. And going to the class each day was like going to the, it was a cross between a rock concert and an Oprah show. It was <laughs> unbelievable. But anyways, I just want people to know it. It was a great experience. And then, so when I graduated July 09, I thought, okay, well now what? Oh, I thought, well, maybe I'll teach plant-based nutrition. So I put a curriculum together and I taught plant-based nutrition at corporations and hospitals, basically anyone who would let me in. And this is where my epiphany happened that led me ultimately to algae. Because as I was teaching people uh, why and how and the importance of eating more vegetables, I found out, heck, I'm not telling them anything they didn't already know. They're, our sure. mothers have been trying to get us to eat our veggies <laughs> since we were kids, right? Yeah, exactly. 
But what I did learn, and this is what motivated me, is that there were too many obstacles. People knew what they should do, but they, they were, the vegetables, face it, are heavy they, to carry home. They take a lot of room in your fridge. They take a long time to clean, to cook, to eat. Kids wouldn't eat them. Husbands wouldn't bad. eat them. They go bad. My arugula goes yellow after about three days. <laughs> um, so I thought, okay, people know what they need to do. And the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, says that 97% of Americans do not get their daily requirement of vegetables, 97%. So that's a lot of people with good intentions, but not enough time to get what needs to be done. So I thought, okay, I have to find something that's fast, easy, nutrient dense, alkaline, rich, chlorophyll rich, that doesn't taste like vegetables is fast and easy once again, I thought mission impossible, right? <laughs> but I'm a very determined person. So, and you don't know what you don't know until you dig in there, right? Lift the hood. Right. So back to everything I found for my sister, nothing was working, nothing was working. And then boom, I got to algae. And that's when the magic happened because algae, first of all, is the most alkaline food in the world. We can talk about the alkaline issues later on if you want pH and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, your cells need to be a slightly alkaline state, a pH of 7.1 for health. But anyways, al algae was the most alkaline. Um, algae is the, also the most nutrient dense food in the universe. That's not my opinion. That's a, we have a quote from NASA that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits or vegetables. One to a thousand. That's crazy. That's exponential. Um, Golly. It's exponential. The United Nations has endorsed algae since 1974. You can go online and see their papers about this when they held a global conference because, drum roll, algae has the highest concentration of protein in the world 64% protein. That's three times the amount of protein as steak. And as you're going to find out, all the protein is already in amino acid form, so it's easy to absorb. So back to alkaline dense alkaline nutrient dense high protein it is the most studied food in the world there are almost a hundred thousand studies documenting all the benefits and more about algae we're going to talk about today so 60 60 000, i think on spirulina and forty thousand on chlorella those are the two of the algae we're going to talk about okay uh, that's a lot of research that's yeah. not a hundred or a thousand or even ten thousand that's a yeah. hundred thousand. So it's so, but the problem is scientists like to talk to other scientists and none of this knowledge has made its way out from the scientific community into the, the consumer world, or even pra many practitioners don't know much about it. So, so it's documented science-based. So anything I tell you today is all evidence-based and can be found in either in the NIH library or other scientific libraries around the world. And as if that wasn't great enough, it's been used for centuries, number one, and number two, for the last almost 75 years in Asia, where it is a multi-billion dollar agricultural crop. So a couple of important things. First, it's been used safely for 75 years. Two, it's not a supplement. Supplements are made in factories from extracts. Algae is no different than lettuce or broccoli or kale. It's a vegetable and we grow it. And all the spirulina and chlorella, as you'll find, is grown in fresh water, not from the ocean. Yes, there is algae in the ocean, but not the out spirulina and chlorella that you buy. Doesn't matter whether it's from Walmart or Whole Foods. Spirulina and chlorella are harvested as agricultural food crops in fresh water. Ours, we're known to have the safest, purest because our water is triple filtered, and we'll talk about that later on. But so importantly, A, it's a food, B, it's been used safely for 75 years. And, and, and not only is it a multi-billion dollar crop in Asia, 99% of it is grown there and 99% of it is used there. So the reason why you don't know about algae is because you didn't grow up with it. Right. You know, you also didn't grow up with matcha or kiwa or, or chia or a lot of these, you know, um, collagen. And yet these have been foods that have been used by indigenous, you know, peoples for centuries. And it just took some brave Amer you know, uh, entrepreneur to uh, try to educate Americans about what it is. And so that's what I'm doing. You know, I want people to know that algae isn't new. It's just new to you. So armed with all this information, alkaline, nutrient dense, high protein, studied, documented, evidence-based, used for 75 years, safely by 
tens of millions of people, but unknown here. Oh, and the quality was really poor. Algae was, has been sold here for almost 50 years, but most of it came from China and had, had weird packaging and low quality. Um, and it came in tablet form. And we're gonna, um, I'm gonna uh, turn off my little, my little backdrop so I can show you. These tablets are about the size of a baby aspirin. They're, teen, they're very, very tiny. And each one of these tablets uh, has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. But here's the cool thing. You can swallow them. So it may three or four or five or 10, 10 or 20, however many you want. We can talk about how much to take later on. Now you don't have to eat vegetables. Now you don't have to cook anything. Now you don't have to carry vegetables. So you will never need to eat another vegetable in your life because algae has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world, 40 vitamins and minerals. And it's not like when you take um, fish oil where you burp it up the after <laughs> for hours or days afterwards, like I do. Once it's down, it's down. Effortless nutrition, that, effortless, never I, goes bad, nothing. I, I, I think you just had uh, every parent and everyone under the age of 10 shout for joy. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You will never have to fight with your kids, your parents. This stuff is safe for pregnant moms, nursing moms, newborns, children, teens, adults, grandparents, pets. It, at least ours is, the safest, most concentrated nutrition endorsed by international agencies for over 50 years and virtually unknown here. So I'm on a mission because our health is at stake. Our environment is at stake. Also, algae is the most sustainable crop in the world. And we'll talk about that too. But it doesn't require a lot of work if you know what to do. And that's why I love algae because it, there is no work. It's effortless. I also call it intelligent food because you have to be intelligent to take it. And you know, it knows what to do in your body. It's effortless nutrition. And you can take, because the tablets, you can take them with you to school, uh, traveling, uh, to the gym, to work, you're stuck in traffic, you're hungry. And we'll talk about the different algae because spirulina and chlorella are completely different and they do completely different things in your body. And you need both of them every single day. And when you take them every day, they will replace virtually all of your supplements, multi, CoQ10, fish oil, calcium, magnesium, all your electrolytes, spirulina will also replace snacks, protein, sports fuel, and chlorella will replace recovery fuel. This stuff is a gold mine, a discovery, a gift from mother nature, and it will rock your world. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> uh, I can't tell. I can't tell. It's certainly a passion project for you. I noticed that at the Biohacking Congress uh, and, and just now, you know, just really um, on fire for the opportunity to really, like you said, transform health. Yeah. People's yeah. health, like you said, that you saw in IAN, just we, we want that. The last two years taught us that, you know, there's some systemic issues uh, with uh, a variety of underlying comorbidities. And it sounds like this could be really helpful oh, yeah. uh, towards that process. So maybe touch on the importance of having an alkaline balance. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, it's obviously important or my sister's oncologist wouldn't mention it to her. And by the way, back in 1941, a German scientist by the name of Otto Warburg um, won a Nobel Prize for discovering that cancer, and we have since found out virtually all diseases, can only exist in cells that are acidic. So keeping your cells at the more alkaline neutral condition of 7.1, because the, the pH um, balance goes runs from one to 14, one being very acidic and 14 being uh, so alkaline. There is actually, algae is the most alkaline food in the world. There is no food more alkaline than algae. And it's, I think at 10, um, okay. but anyway, so, so here's the thing. Uh, well, there's two parts to the pH that I'm going to talk about. One is relates to your blood and one relates to your cells. So let's talk about your blood first because it feeds your cells. So it's kind of like where it all starts. And as you're going to find out, um, algae, as I mentioned earlier, has the most chlorophyll in the world and chlorophyll in your blood are virtually identical in chemical composition. So there, there's an also interesting cue to why you need to have things that are alkaline. Your blood needs to be uh, actually 7.34, which is 
even more alkaline than your cells. And our bodies are so intelligent and nature, because we're part of nature. And if you eat, because if you eat acidic food or you exercise too much, or you're, even your emotions release acidic uh, you know, chemicals that are acidic, your blood, because it's the fluid that delivers all the nutrients to the rest of your body, your blood would become acidic um, uh, if this happened regularly, but it's so intelligent, it knows how to keep you safe. And so what it does when you eat too much acidic food, like um, too much dairy, too much animal protein, processed food, sugar, sugar is the worst, mm -hmm. it, your body will um, pull out minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium from your bones, where most of your minerals are stored, and also from your organs and from your cells oh, wow. Insta instantly to your blood to neutralize that acidity. But here's the thing, if that happens too regularly, uh, as it does, because everyone's eating, most people eating a bad diet, it wears down your immune system. It contributes to osteoporosis. Your bones need to be, to be healthy. Your bones need minerals and a complex web of protein. People think it's calcium that makes your bones strong. No, actually too much calcium actually makes them brittle, but it's where most calcium is stored. It's the minerals that give you the flexibility and you lose that flexibility and your bones become more porous if you eat too much acidic food because your body is constantly pulling the minerals out of that bank account of minerals to neutralize acidity in your blood. So that's number wow. one, what happens with your blood pH. And back to the cell structure. Um, so when your cells, uh, if they, they need to be alkaline, 7.1, uh, and when they are at that, that means the, they're functioning optimally. There's lots of oxygen, the, the free radicals are being eliminated, the mitochondria are getting the nutrients they need to generate energy. Um, but when there's too much acidity, um, the oxygen levels drop in your cells and that allows bacteria and other um, you know, viruses and other, you know, acidic life forms to take hold. And that causes the cell to have more um, free radicals. Uh, it starts to think of, uh, you know, if you were living in New York, if you didn't take your, you know, the, the, um, the garbage out, the trash out after a couple of days, it would get pretty stinky, right? <laughs> well, that's what happens with your cells when they become too acidic. They don't function properly and the toxins can't get out and the garbage can't get out. The free radicals can't get out. And then this, the cell becomes even more acidic, which uh, is, a, is a great um, uh, opening for disease to yeah. take place. Your first symptoms are that you're fatigued or you might have some, you know, stomach issues or and it certainly increases inflammation. Yeah. The cell often stops communicating because now the mitochondria are either sick or dead or they're dying. And um, it's a, just a slippery slope. So the key to maintaining your health at the cellular level, one of the keys is to maintain that pH 7.1. And because algae is the most alkaline food in the world and it gets into your system faster than anything else in the world, it is probably the easiest and safest way to ensure that. And when your cells are healthy, your immune system will be healthy and functioning so that you can fight off cancer, you can fight off viruses, you can fight off anything. It's when your immune system becomes challenged that um, you run into some more serious health issues. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you hit on the inflammation piece. That was the first thing I thought of as you were explaining that process uh, of what transpires and, and how big of an issue that is on, on a number of diseases yeah. that you hear oh. about, especially at the tail end of life. Yeah, uh, inflammation is uh, the realizing is the probably the cause of almost everything that's a disease. Um, yeah. And it uh, and the inflammation, what happens is um, uh, it contributes to the, your DNA and RNA becoming damaged. So, uh, and so when they're damaged, then they replicate in a damaged form and then they trigger the, it's called epigenetics when your, your environment at the cellular level triggers um, um, the DNA to maybe contribute to some other disease that you might not have had if your DNA wasn't triggered by um, having inflammation or too much acidity or lack of oxygen or not enough anti-free radicals. And uh, as you're going to find out, uh, you know, algae 
it's like this it's it's like you're a hospital i call it your uh, nutritional insurance but it's really your health insurance because it's a one-stop shop you might take it the spirulina for energy but yeah. you're also getting very high essential fatty acids you're also getting high chlorophyll you're getting all the antioxidants that you need to you know keep those free radicals under control um the chlorophyll can feed the mitochondria it's you know it's endless so it's 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 the gift that keeps on giving i mean if yeah. if there was ever a, a genie in a bottle uh <laughs> this is it man yeah and uh you know we'll talk about algae in a second what you know what it is overall but i'd like to point out that algae was the first life on earth uh 3.5 billion years ago it predates us by 3.4 billion um humans were way late later algae and so you gotta think there's gotta be something special if it was the first life on earth outlived a uh, couple of ice ages dinosaurs and it's still here <laughs> yeah yeah you make a great point so um before we get into the, the the two pillars of algae i'll call it um you mentioned the farming and that it's you know very sustainable and generally straightforward and fresh water so maybe could you unpack that just for a minute on like how the farming practice works um Okay, can I talk about how most algae is are is grown? Yeah. So then then they'll the, you'll have the context of why yeah. this is so special. Yeah. So um, algae is its own food category, and as I mentioned, it was the first life on Earth. And algae is everywhere. It's in the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, the streams, your swimming pool, your aquarium, <laughs> the soil. It's don't everywhere. Skim it and just eat it straight out, right? Yeah. Don't don't do that. Don't don't do that because because uh, what you're what all that algae is fine for the fish and the whales and the animals, but it's toxic to humans. And also primarily because you can't control um, your oceans or your lakes or even your swimming pool and algae will absorb whatever's in the water. So that's one of the main reasons why spirulina and chlorella are harvested in fresh water as food crops because you can control the water quality. You can't control the water quality in a lake or an ocean, you just mm. can't. So that's number one. So there's two main, sorry, I'll use your word, pillars of uh, algae uh, species. One is called macroalgae and one is called microalgae. We're gonna be talking mostly about microalgae, but let me tell you what macroalgae is. It's that big stringy stuff that washes up on shore, also known as seaweed, uh, dulse, kelp. And it's very important because it has, and good for you, because it has iodine, because it comes from the ocean, iodine. and it has lots of fiber. But uh, seaweed and all these macroalgaes have virtually zero nutrition. I buy kelp noodles. You can buy a whole bag and serve two people with it. I think it's five calories in a bag because there's zero nutrition in seaweed. It it's, um, tastes great. Uh, yeah. And as I say, it has iodine and fiber. So it's still important, but not for nutrition. Its brother, microalgae is the superstar of the family. <laughs> yeah. It has a thousand times more nutrition than mac macroalgae. And um, there's a, a couple of main categories is blue-green algae, microalgae, green algae, red algae. And it's called microalgae because it's microscopic in size. Something like a thousand cells of microalgae would fit on the head of a pin. Wow. Uh, so, so you get a sense, you start to understand why it's so concentrated and why NASA says one gram of microalgae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables because it's so concentrated. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever bought uh, an item, maybe like a pillow or something, and it arrived in a teeny tiny box because it was vacuum packed, right? And then you <laughs> open the box and it was poof, you know, and it just expanded. So, right. so try to do the reverse of that. Algae is just so concentrated that you get this huge burst of nutrition from a teeny tiny little single cell. So as I said, blue, green, green, red, you know, algae all everywhere. And the only, and so spirulina, which we're gonna talk about is an, one example of a blue green algae and chlorella, which we're gonna talk about is one example of, a, of um, a green algae. Now I want you to be clear on this because you may go to the internet and you'll find an article about toxic blue green algae. Yes, because it came from the ocean. Uh, poor, I feel badly for algae because algae gets the bum rap. Bad rap. Al algae yeah. only shows up in the water when there's already bacteria there. 
Algae yeah. is the cleanup crew. You don't know this, I'm sure, but algae is used in virtually every single water treatment plant in North America because it kills bacteria. So they filter wow. the water through algae. And if you've ever noticed that if you have water from your tap on a white plate and might eventually notice a slight green you know, circle, that's because it's from the algae. So algae kills bacteria. So it only shows up on your favorite beach because there's been too many people peeing in the water or there's too much runoff from of agricultural pesticides. It's an indicator there's a problem. And algae is the solution. It's not the bad boy, it's the cleanup crew. <laughs> so, so, but I want you to know that there's lots, there's tens of thousands of blue-green algae. Only one of them is spirulina and only spirulina is harvested as food. So okay. that's why I want you, when you understand now, how we grow it in fresh water, you'll understand that there's lots and lots of other algaes and they're all toxic. Uh, and the only way to ensure you don't have toxicity is to heart grow it in fresh water uh, as we do. And it's a, uh, as I say, it's a multi-billion dollar agricultural crop in Asia. It's almost as big as the beef industry is. You, you know, you have to scratch your head going, how can something so big remain so unknown here and yeah. partly it's because it's a vegetable so it can't there's no patents their biotechs weren't interested uh, food companies don't introduce new foods to america they wait till somebody like me has proven that it's needed um, and the algae that is sold here mostly comes from china with you know terrible packaging and uh, nobody has explained it i'm the only person in the entire country traveling around, educating people about what algae is and why it's good for you. So um, so it's been here but um, for a long, long time, but um, it's been probably sitting on the bottom shelf of your favorite health food store. Although now more and more people are aware of spirulina, putting in their yeah. smoothie. They don't know why it's good for them, and I'll tell you. But well, they know it. They know it is, but they can't figure out why. So yeah. I'm, I'm here to tell you the why. <laughs> and as a quick aside, I did notice that spirulina is showing up in kombuchas lately, yes. um, and and being used as in in some of these newer sport drinks with the kombucha. I have a friend that actually has a company and and did exactly that. He created a blue Hawaii um, drink, and it includes. Uh, yeah. spirulina in it. Yeah. And uh, spirulina has been in a dwala for decades. You know, the irony is algae has been in the background. I mean, it's, it's used for so many things now. And we're, you know, here in America, we're almost like the last one to the party of algae. You know, seven years ago, nobody knew about collagen powder. Now it's everywhere. Yeah. Well, algae is going to be 10 times bigger than collagen powder because it has 10 times more nutrition and it's used for 10 times more purposes or a hundred. Uh, but it just, you know, it, new things just take a while yeah. to, you know, settle in and get understood. So, um, it, but it's, it's going to be, it's going to change our world. Uh, and it's, not, that's not my opinion. That's uh, governments all around the world are rapidly flocking to you know, understanding algae, growing it, using it for just about everything from packaging to clothing materials uh, to um, you know, inserting it into foods. We put uh, chia seeds into everything now. 10 years ago, who knew about chia seeds, right? Now it's, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. or, um, well, yeah. algae is going to be everywhere. It already is in Asia. They put it in everything there. And the, by the way, the Japanese have the lowest cancer rates, the lowest obesity rates, the best longevity rates. Mm -hmm. and great skin and hair and they do not leave their house without chlorella algae every day so go figure yeah. <laughs> so well, okay so um let's talk about the growing so now that you know algae is everywhere but it's only harvested as a food crop for mass consumption in fresh water and it's grown as i mentioned everywhere china india um, Japan, we grow ours in Taiwan. Uh, now, uh, and they all grow it in water, but it's, it's the strains of algae, the quality, the purity of the water, the way it's dried distinguishes us as the better, safer, purer, more nutrient dense algae on the market. And that's also why it's more expensive, um, but you'll also need less of it to get the same benefits because it is so concentrated. So the water's triple filtered, so it's very, very pure. Um, when we grow it, we use the highest strains of algae, you know, just like wine or beef. There is no one standard, it, you know, you can't really compare it to broccoli because there's not a lot of variety in broccoli, but there is in wine and there is in beef. And so um, there's different strains of algae. Uh, we use the higher strains that have the higher protein, higher nutrient value, higher chlorophyll. 
And then when we, it takes about a month to, to grow. And then um, we uh, pull it to the end of the water area and then uh, shoot it up into the air multiple times and we air dry it. We don't use high heat. Now, almost everybody else uses high heat because almost everybody else is a low priced, low quality algae. So they, they survive on high volume sales mm -hmm. and it's not as high quality. So they need to use heat to get it to market faster. To say but a that, faster manufacturing process, probably to get it out the door. Right, right. But that kills the enzymes. So now you are no longer having a raw food. Um, our spirulina and chlorella are both raw. Um, and spirulina is a live food, which means it would start growing if you put it in water. So um, that's very important because your body, that's why we're so proud that algae is a food and not a supplement, because your body is from nature and real food is from nature. Right. And just like the whole 30 crowd movement, your body recognizes nutrients in food better than it does in supplements and it absorbs them better because supplements a, they're made in factories with high heat, with damage, which damage the nutrients. And number B, the most supplements are made with extracts that simply don't exist like that in nature. So your body goes, huh, what's this? <laughs> well, maybe I'm not really sure I'll absorb you know, what I can, but I, you know, I'm not really, it, it's like, you know, if you lived in New York city and the subway came by and it was already full and you kind of try to push your way into a full unit, you know, you might get in, you might not get out. But so when you have supplements with extracts, your, your body's looking for the real food and, you know, the, the supplements can push in a little bit of the nutrient, but it, you, you can't get in all the way. Yeah. It, it doesn't exist like that. Um, so anyway, so, so a, we dry our, we grow ours in, you know, triple filtered spring water, don't use high heat to dry it. Then we, we, um, press the, the powder into little tablets that I showed you earlier. They're about the size of baby aspirin and, um, there's no, we don't put any binders or fillers in ours. And the best way I've described it to people is just, just imagine, you know, like a, um, a conveyor belt with a bunch of muffin tins. We're just pressing the tablets and, you know, something presses them into the, into the form and then, and that's it. Nothing else is added to it. So it's, it's a hundred percent algae. Other companies, especially if you get those gel caps, they blend it with, you know, anything that they can get that's cheap. You know, so I've seen pictures with ground up yeah. rocks. So it's less, less, less efficacy, uh, lower efficacy. And, and also they can add stuff that could be harmful to you. You just don't know. Um, so I, I don't recommend those. Um, the tablets are easy to swallow. They're teeny tiny. We call them bits because A, they're cute because they're so tiny, but also because they're bits of nutrition. They're, they're not a supplement. They're, they're concentrated bits of nutrition. And then the last next step is we import them in bulk on big cargo ships here to America and where we package them at an FDA approved facility. And we do third party lab tests because we sell our algae tablets. We are the only company that sells algae tablets through doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, longevity centers, uh, wellness centers like the Recovery RX uh, in your neighborhood. Um, we sell them through naturopaths, homeopaths. So um, these are people that are are prescribing literally our algae to their to their patients. And you know we've probably 500 now. Um, we're now selling through spas and cryotherapy, and the biohack community loves us. Yeah. Um, so uh, so we'll be doing more of that. So we're the only company that I'm aware of that does third-party lab tests here in the United States. I mean, we get third-party lab tests from our supplier like everybody else does, but that's not good enough. We you, you just never really know what you're getting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, and then we do a third set, another set of tests to ensure there are no microtoxins because microtoxins are found uh, everywhere. They're found in coffee, they're found in wheat, um, and they can cause havoc with your brain and with your cells. Um, but there aren't any in ours because our water is so pure uh, and, and tested for purity. So yeah. it's, it's very safe. So I'm very proud of, I mean, you know, I'm the founder CEO and I'm also the chief scientific officer. So, you know, I chose all these techniques. Oh, and there's one other little dis thing that distinguishes us from other companies. As you're going to find out, spirulina is technically a bacteria and does not have a cellulose wall, but chlorella, so it gets absorbed into your body almost instantly. Chlorella is the complete opposite. It has the hardest cell wall in the plant kingdom. But the important part of that is that that hard cell wall, as you'll learn, attaches to toxins and pulls them out. Lead, mercury, radiation, all the heavy metals. It also pulls out alcohol, 
uh, pulls out um, lactic acid. So athletes love it after a workout. That's but here's huge. the thing. Yeah, it is huge. Uh, and it's been used for cent, you know, you know, decades that way. We work with biological dentists who use it to pull out mercury when they pull out fillings. Wow. Um, the United Nations used it at Chernobyl after the disaster there to pull out radiation. Uh, wow. Yeah, I, mean, and I had so, no idea. Yeah, well, nobody does. That's why I'm that's kind of your, so, yeah, your you know. mission, right? <laughs> this is, uh, you know, like I say, everything I tell you is completely documented in science. Yeah. So I would have no reason to lose my credibility after doing this for 11 years. Right. I'm not lose my credibility now. It's taken too long to build. Um, but here's so, the thing about that hard cell wall. Um, it has to be cracked at production or your body wouldn't absorb the nutrients. Now, the cell wall is hard because it is important because it pulls out toxins, but there's also 40 vitamins and minerals and 60% protein that you want. So <clears throat> the grandfather of chlorella is a company called Sun Chlorella. They're based in Japan. I'm very grateful to them and was very respectful. I still am respectful of them because they took 10 years to figure out how to grow chlorella algae because it's a very complicated crop. And they found you had to crack the cell wall. They developed a technique that they now patent. They patented, and they and they um, all virtually all chlorella companies use their technique, which is to tumble the the chlorella in glass beads so it cracks physically cracks the chlorella. But the problem is the glass heats up, and lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella, which of course you're supposed to be taking to remove things like lead. You're not supposed to be introducing it. Right. So when I started the company, I said, well, that's not going to work for us. There's got to be some other way to crack the chlorella and a new technique had just been discovered, which is what we use. And we pass the chlorella through a sound chamber and um, it's the vibrations that crack the chlorella. So no lead, no heat, very safe. And so I'm very proud of that. So, um, so anyways, that's um, how the algae is grown. My goal is to grow it in America one day, but as I said, it's very complicated. It requires a certain temperature and climatic condition, subtropical. Um, so, you know, I've got a couple of you know, locations, but it's going to be five or 10 years before we can do that. It will require five or $10 million to invest in it. And, um, but that's the plan. So, okay. because the supply chain right now around the world yeah. is a disaster and I don't want to have to rely on my chlorella or spirulina coming to me, you know, six months late, it's already a problem. Right, um, so, right. So anyways. Diversity in production, yeah. So yeah. so you mentioned the two, and I actually have two of the uh, little travel packets here um, yeah. of the uh, the two main ones, and I think there's a few others now, yeah. um, but, but break down the spirulina and-, and Yeah, yeah. So um, spirulina, uh, and by the way, I'll, I'll just show people a picture of a farm because this is a spirulina farm. So oh. this can help you understand that it's not a supplement. Again, it's grown that these are shallow, long, uh, they call them runways and the, the spirulina grows in a spiral. So they plant it at one end and it grows when it fills the end, then they harvest it and then it gets dried. But um, yeah, so spirulina, um, is uh, the one that has the highest concentration of protein in the world. It's called a blue-green algae because it has two pigments in it. It has the green one that most people will already be familiar with called chlorophyll, but it also has another pigment called phycocyanin, which is blue. And I'm going to show you a picture here. If you took a couple of tablets of spirulina and put it in a bowl of water, this is the gorgeous blue that would come out of it. Uh, and that blue pigment has lots of healing properties. I don't know if we have enough time to go through them, but uh, yeah. they do things like um, stop the growth of blood vessels to tumors and they intercept the COVID virus. So those are pretty two big ones, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, so we see how it disperses evenly through the water. That's because it's a water-based pigment. And that's important because it affects your, your blood and your plasma. And over here is a picture of chlorophyll. Now this one's from chlorella, um, but you see how it clumps and it doesn't yeah. disperse like that? That's because chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. And when we talk about chlorella, I'll dig into that a bit more because that's one of the reasons why chlorophyll builds your, the health of your cell walls because your cell walls need healthy fats and chlorophyll is a healthy fat. So, um, so anyways, back to spirulina, blue green algae, and it's um, highest concentration of protein in the world, 64%, and all the proteins already in amino acid form. And the reason why that's important is it means your body does not have to break the protein down to get access 
to the aminos because that's the only way your body can absorb protein. Now, um, it's also a complete protein, which means mm. Um, it has all the pro amino acids that your body can't make. Something like collagen, by the way, is an incomplete protein because it does not have tryptophan. It's, you, and if you don't have a complete protein, your body cannot put the protein to work. You need, hmm. there's 20 amino acids. Spirulina has 18 of the 20 aminos, including the nine essential, they're called essential amino acids. They're essential because your body can't make them. Wow. So back to, So now spirulina has all the aminos all ready for you, all 18 of them. And because it has no cellulose wall, because it's a bacteria, it gets absorbed instantly. And then it has all the B vitamins, B6, B12, all of them. And B vitamins are what convert uh, aminos into energy. So now your body's getting all this great amino acids and the B vitamins are converting it to energy. And so that's what gives your body physical and, and mental energy. Um, you get additional, and now it's not lightning bolts from the sky energy. The best way you describe it is you just feel fresh. Yeah. Uh, you feel alert, uh, ready for the day, um, nothing more. You might not even notice it at first. And the other cool thing is it satisfies your hunger because it has 64% protein and it's also loaded with essential fatty acids, including omega-3, which satisfy your hunger. And by the way, even though it has 40 vitamins and minerals and all this great protein, it has zero carbs. So it's fantastic for intermittent fasting. It will not take you out yeah. of ketosis. Um, it's great if you're starting, if you're in keto, starting keto, uh, if you're paleo, if you're um, a carnivore, um, all of, you know, even doc, I was on Dr. Gundry's podcast in the summertime. He's written a book called The um, Plant Paradox. He used to be a heart surgeon. Yeah. And uh, he's endorsed algae for years because the other cool thing is that it doesn't have any of the, what's called negative, anti-nutrients like lectins and oxalates that can cause damage and they're found in many plants. So algae doesn't have any of those. So you get all this rich protein, all the great energy, essential fatty acids. It's loaded with um, iron that converts, that d delivers oxygen to your brain, to your body. It's a vasodilator that opens up your blood vessels. And then you get these other 40 vitamins and minerals. Boom. Like talk about a superstar. It replaces... <laughs> It replaces uh, your multivitamin, your fish oil, snacks. It's a meal replacement, your sports fuel. When we first started, we were actually um, became, um, we weren't planning on it, but we became a sports nutrition company because the runners, marathoners, triathletes, ultra runners, Olympic athletes, NHL players, they found out how great, the great clarity they got mentally and the energy they got physically from the, from the algae and it did not upset their stomach like all those jar, you know, gels and bars and which yeah. are loaded with sugar and carbs and cause diarrhea and stomach distress. And you get none of that from algae. And it, and it kind of goes back to the volume of food you need to consume. Like we haven't quite even touched on this is how agriculture or mass agriculture has really depleted the nutritional density. Oh, so we yeah. almost need to even eat double the volume it's, of food and that's just not sustainable. You know, we're in a, we're between a rock and a hard place right now. Um, people, our medical system is pumping people full of prescription drugs and our soils have been so overcropped. There is nothing in the soil anymore, N no minerals. And on top of that, much of our agriculture, if it's not grown here, it's grown far, far away and it's harvested before it's ripe, which means yeah. all the enzymes and nutrients haven't made their way out to the fruit or to the leaves. So and then it's, so it's cropped before it's ready. And then it sits in warehouses. So we are getting calories and sugar and fiber, but not nutrients. Our vegetables mm -hmm. today look nothing like what they used to look like 50 years ago. Yeah. That's why algae is your last shot at getting the nutrition you need. And here's the great thing. It's easier than any other food, period. <laughs> because you don't have to clean it, cook it, eat it. Yeah. So yeah. Just, you know, it never goes bad ever, never, ever goes bad. I mean, we have three year expiry dates, but uh, it never goes bad. You can keep it for 10, 20 years. Um, so it is, it's the answer. Uh, and we'll talk, we didn't get around to the, you know, eco-friendly sustainable piece, but hopefully we will later, although I, I have a hard stop at noon, but yeah. um, anyway, so, so that's spirulina, very energizing, nourishing, great for kids, moms, pregnant people, dogs, pets, cats, doesn't matter. It has been used so safely by everyone. 
and no drug interactions. It's, it's Huge. by the way, the nutrient profile is almost identical to mother's breast milk. And we know that mother's breast milk is the perfect food. So L, spirulina algae comes in number two. Now I will point out that, um, you know, I started the company because my sister was, you know, had cancer. So women's health is very important to me. And after the first sure. couple of years, I noticed that uh, women weren't buying my energy bits spirulina because we call our spirulina energy bits. Uh, and it's in a blue bag, by the way. Um, to help you understand that's a blue, oops, a blue algae. We have canisters now. Um, but uh, so my girlfriend said, well, you got to, you know, make it pink and give it a cute name to attract <laughs> women. Um, and because spirulina also, because of the high protein and collagen and antioxidants, it does build your skin and hair better than collagen, by the way. I made a second brand and call it Beauty Bits. So we have two brands of spirulina. Okay. One one is called Energy Bits and the other one is called Beauty Bits, but they are identical, just different packaging because I okay. wanted people to be comfortable with, um, you know, whatever they're buying. And uh, I personally, the Beauty Bits is my favorite. So there you go. <laughs> um, so anyway, so it does build your skin and hair beautifully um, from the inside. And by the way, what you put in your body nourishes your skin and affects your skin quality a thousand times more than what you put on it. Um, and if you were curious to know, uh, lots of very high-end um, skincare companies like La Mer have been using algae in their formulations for 30, 40 years. They just never told you. Um, that's their secret ingredient. But I say, why would you cheat the rest of your body uh, and just give your skin, your face, sure. Um, the benefit of an extract of algae when you can give your entire body, including your face, not just the extract, but the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. So uh, don't cheat yourself by um, getting, you know, topicals with algae, you know, get yourself the full, the real deal. Yeah. And, inside uh, and out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's fairly energizing, great for your skin and hair, very satisfying for meals, uh, workouts, all that sort of stuff. Then we switch over to chlorella, which um, has the highest amount of chlorophyll in the world. Remember I said spirulina has the highest protein? Chlorophyll is a critical nutrient that is virtually missing now from everybody's diet because as we mentioned, the soils are so damaged. Have you noticed that your arugula goes yellow after like day three? Yeah, that's because there's hardly any chlorophyll to start with it. So, and chlorophyll is critical for a couple of reasons. I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So here is a uh, image that shows the chemical composition of your hemoglobin, that's your red blood cells. And this one is your, is chlorophyll. Notice that they're almost identical. That's because they are. That's the amazing. Difference, it's amazing. And you can go into any science book or go online to see this. I didn't, you know, again, I didn't make this up. Um, the only difference is your blood has iron in the middle and that's what carries oxygen. And um, the uh, chlorophyll has magnesium. Otherwise they are identical. And in fact, the irony is that chlorophyll is actually red. It it, we see it as green because of the way the light reflects off it. But if you put it in a dark room, you put chlorophyll in a dark room, it's red, just like our blood. Cool, huh? Uh, so that's pretty- That sweet. is so cool. Yeah, so anyways, um, chlorophyll has been used for centuries for helping people to heal. When they had surgeries, injuries, chlorophyll was used. This was before the chemical or the, you know, pharmaceutical industry. And they, even as recently as World War II, when they ran out of blood for transfusions for the injured, you would just give them liquid chlorophyll. They would heal just as fast. And they used it topically on injuries because it kills bacteria. So, um, so it's, it's crazy important for your blood. And when you have healthy blood, you're going to have a healthy brain, healthy body, healthy digestion. I mean, your blood is your highway that delivers oxygen and nutrients to all your cells, you know, not yes. to make it a bit of a side segue, but with COVID, it's not just a lung disorder, it's a blood disorder. Blood disorder, yeah. Because what they're finding is that virus inter goes into your bloodstream and kicks out that iron atom that I showed you and inserts itself. So now your blood no longer has the iron atom to carry oxygen. So your blood is circulating without oxygen. So the, and so your organs and your cells don't have oxygen and they can't survive. And that's why usually the, the most important organ is your heart. And it's mm -hmm. the first one that, 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 can't, that collapses. And that's why most people 
die with COVID from heart attacks because their hearts were not getting the oxygen because the COVID virus kicked out the iron atom. Now, here's the scary thing. When the virus kicks out the iron atom out of the hemoglobin, I consider, I sort of make the analogy of hemoglobin to like bubble wrap, because when the iron atom is in that hemoglobin, it's safely protected. Because if anyone's ever gone to a, you know, a, a, a dock, uh, you know, or, uh, you'll see rust, the rusty ships, and you'll see, that's what iron does. It, oxidi yeah. it oxidizes, oxidizes, right? Yeah. So when the, um, when the COVID virus kicks out the iron atom out of the protective bubble wrap of the hemoglobin, the iron atom doesn't disappear. It's now just a rogue cell that's free form touring in your blood. And so what it does is it, it damages everything that it comes in contact with, particularly your lungs. It causes oxidative stress and damage. So as if you're not getting enough damage from the virus, this free form, you know, rogue um, iron atom contributes to even more and speed. This is why people die so quickly is because of this iron atom is now causing even more damage or equal, equally as amount uh, as, um, and so what, uh, and here's the cool thing. Algae has the highest chlorophyll in the world and chlorophyll is alkalining and chlorophyll, um, and, and algae contains high amounts of iron. Uh, so it could, you know, this part I'm saying is not documented by science, but I'm hy hypothesizing that maybe it could restore the blood to a more um, neutral state and bring back the iron into the blood because it's got iron in it. So anyways, that was just a little segue, but so, so chlorophyll yeah. is important for building your blood. And here's the other thing. Remember I showed you that picture about the fat clumping chlorophyll? Well, all of your health issues start at the cellular level. Yes. And so that means you're, you've got to keep your cells healthy, the mitochondria in the, health, in the cells. And to do that, your cell walls need to be permeable because when they're permeable, nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. And healthy fats like omega-3 will do that. But so does chlorophyll because it's a fat-based pigment. So the best analogy I've given to people or come up with is that when you have dirty windows, you can't see out and sunlight can't get in. And so think of chlorophyll as window washers for your cell walls. Keeps them healthy, permeable, nutrients in, toxins out. It's like, you know, in those building, large office towers have those circular doors you, you spin through. So, yeah. so when your cells are permeable, it, you know, they're spinning. Toxins in, or nutrients in, toxins out. Nutrients in, toxins out. It's when they get um, damaged that spiraling you know door stops <laughs> and now the toxins start building up in the cell now they become um too many free radicals now they're more acidic now there's less oxygen now the mitochondria get damaged you see what happens so it's critical yeah. to keep that per that cell wall permeable and chlorophyll is the best way to do that you know lots of people have juice fasts or cleansing and part of the cleansing is this chlorophyll that's cleansing your cell walls so that's number two about why chlorophyll is so important well it sounds like uh, you're making the case too for a uh, potential chlorophyll fast and use that yeah. as, as your yeah. your main source to cleanse yourself yeah you you can easily do a fast with algae i mean you could live on it forever and not um have any nutrients deprived period uh, both spirulina and chlorella. Chlorella, again, has the highest chlorophyll in the world. Spirulina has the highest protein, but it does have a very high amount of chlorophyll as well. And just to put it in context, chlorella has 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula, a thousand times more chlorophyll than Chinese greens, and even 25 times more chlorophyll than liquid chlorophylls. There is nothing in the world with more chlorophyll than chlorella. Chlorophyll also you know, cleanses your breath. It's been used by the um, equine community, both spirulina and chlorella, for at least 50 years. Like there's pockets of people in America, naturopaths, equine, that know about this stuff because they are connected to the science community. But I think it's time that people in just your average Joe, your our consumers, get these benefits too. Why should just these few people that are yeah. connected to scientists find out why this is so good for you. I'm, I'm all about the why. So back to chlorella, high in chlorophyll. Then, as I mentioned, it has that hard cell wall that attaches to toxins. And 
it's not just that we're surrounded by toxins, metals in the air, pesticides, glyphosate. I mean, it's it's a dog's show out there. It's just, it's awful. We, yeah. There's something like 200,000 pesticides and chemicals have been released in our environment since World War II. And as if that wasn't bad enough, consider this. You know that your body is constantly rebuilding itself. Your bones, your skin, your every single part of you, every single day is a new you. <laughs> so think about it. Where does the old you go? Where does the old you go? Right. So it's so dead cells. There are thirty trillion cells that die in your body every day, and dead cells are toxic. And if you don't get rid of those dead cells, they will gather in your lymph. They will gather in your cells. They'll attract bacteria. They'll be attacked by free radicals. They'll damage your mitochondria. This is one of the reasons why people age is because they aren't clearing out the garbage. Think about it. Think about it. If you didn't take the garbage out in your house for a week, how stinky it would be. Well, (laughs) imagine not doing that in your body ever, right? Right. You need to be cleaning out the garbage in your body every single day. And I remind people, we take a shower on the outside every day. Chlorella is like taking a shower on the inside every day. Plus, you get all these extra benefits. You get 60% protein. You get 40 vitamins and minerals. Uh, you, you get all that great chlorophyll for cleansing or building your heart. I mean, that's why I keep saying it's a one-stop shop. You might take it for one thing, but you'll get clearer skin, you'll, you'll have thicker hair, you'll have fresher breath, you'll have better digestion, you'll sleep better. So because of all these attributes of chlorella, um, that detox, the chlorophyll, it also has the highest RNA and DNA in the world, has the highest tryptophan in the world, it has a, a thousand other nutrients I don't have time to go into. It's a wellness algae. It's a recovery algae. You, it helps you yeah. recover from your day, recover from sickness, recover from drinking alcohol, recover from sports because it identifies lactic acid. So um, we recommend you take it any time of day, but definitely at night because your body goes through a rest and um, uh, repair cycle right. while you're sleeping. So if you have chlorella in your system while that's happening, your DNA will be repaired. Your more toxins will be removed. Chlorella also stimulates peristalsis, which um, is a critical part, uh, which is a bowel movement. And you've got to get rid of the garbage that your body didn't want. And right. so many people as they age get um, constipated. Excuse me, like if you're ketogenic, very often you're constipated. Uh, carnivores are often constipated. You wouldn't believe how many people are constipated. Nobody wants to talk about it. Well, chlorella algae is your godsend. It will make sure everything is moving s- smoothly and efficiently. So um, generally people want energy and focus and they're hungry in the morning, afternoon, maybe two o'clock before a workout. So that's when they generally take spirulina, the end which we call you know, energy, energy bets or, or beauty bets. And generally, um, uh, and you, you know, you want, well, not generally, but we recommend to facilitate that repair cycle while you're sleeping, you would take the chlorella, which we call recovery bits, um, so that you can recover your health while you're sleeping. It's, it's like having a, your cleaning lady coming in while you're getting your beauty rest. I mean, really, who, who doesn't want that? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, you know, it's, it's a perfect way to kind of close things out. I think on, the recovery piece we're on the rest from recovery podcast that yeah yeah you know, the importance of sleep and being able to yeah. use this as a way to facilitate that process more effectively uh to wake up refreshed and even that recovery will add that energy plus exactly. with the bits so yeah uh, and um the uh chlorella also has the highest amount of tryptophan in the world um people used to think that turkey had a lot of tryptophan no it's chlor it's it's chlorella algae has five times the amount of tr- uh, as turkey now it won't make you sleepy i was gonna say we're not gonna pass out on this no no <laughs> it's uh tryptophan is the precursor to melatonin so it will facilitate a deeper sleep um it won't make you sleepy it will just facilitate that transition Um, And again, effortlessly, I want to just reinforce again how effortless these algae tablets are spirulina most people swallow it because, frankly, it's a very earthy flavor, the high protein makes it really chewy so it sticks a little bit to your teeth, you can chew it, I I, I chew mine just to you know prove it to you. I chew them so I just had, I just had a plate of vegetables. Yeah. Um, Now the chlorella tastes pretty good, especially if you put it with sea salt or macadamia nuts. Um, I eat it all day long. I have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I have it for snacks. I definitely have it for bed, but I eat it all day long. So you can put it on your salads, 
mix it in your trail mix. And if you can learn to like it as a meal or as a snack, now you're totally understanding that it's food. Yeah. See, my tongue was green. <laughs> and speaking of that, speaking of that, kids love to chew it because they love seeing their tongues Sticking go the tongue green. Out. They, yeah. they turn it into a game. Yeah. If you have children, turn it into a game. They'll think it's fun. And you're secretly going, ha, ha, ha. I just got all the- <laughs> This gave you a nutrition. lifetime supply of vegetables right now. Yeah, exactly. And the, yeah, it helps with their brain formation, the spirulina, because it has the GLA in it. Um, you, I promise you, your kids will just be superstars. Um, they will probably never get sick if they take the chlorella every day, and nor will you. We've had mothers tell us at the end of the school year, teachers would come up to them and say like, what are you doing with your kids? They're the only ones that didn't get colds at school. And it was, they had been giving the children, you know, two or three tablets a day um, of the chlorella. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It, it truly works. I mean, something can't be this big in Asia if it doesn't work, right? Right. Um, so it's, um, and well, while I, we- I know I'm, I'm planning on adding it to uh, our, our regimen. We take uh, some level of supplements in the morning and this seems like it'd be a good replacement or yeah. Patient to, to, I've got three, three daughters that need to be healthy. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this will, this will be great. Um, it's it, uh, spirulina again is great for, um, moods, uh, um, helping with ADHD, uh, cramping during menstruation, uh, cleaning up your skin. Um, it's, it's amazing. It? It's, a vas- it's a vasodilator. So yeah. Um, it, you know, and vasodilation is important for other things too. So guys who are out there, um, but I want to show you this little chart, uh, just again, to reinforce how much con- concentrated nutrition is in one teeny little tablet. One tablet has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables that you did not have to carry home, clean, cook, or eat. Yes. No more fights Great. with your kids. No more worrying. Put it in their lunches to go to school. Um, and I, I, I know we talked about the spirulina. We had two brands, spir- um, beauty bits and energy bits and chlorella is recovery bits. But if you didn't want to um, buy them separately, we, you know, we encourage you to, if you can, because you get you have more control over what you're getting. But we do have another brand called Vitality Bits, which is okay. a blend of the two algae. So it's half spirulina, half chlorella. Oh, okay. So if, if simplicity is what you're seeking, this is your answer. Um, now, I also want to tell you that we sell them in um, large bags. I don't have one. Well, here's one. We, have, we sell them in large bags on our website, energybits.com. And um, we actually have a 20% discount code for your community. Just, awesome. use the, just use the word REST. When you check out, type in REST, and it works on all the products all the time. So it's not like a short term or anything. Just it's all the time. Um, and the most popular items are the bags. They, they have a thousand tablets in the bag. Now a bag normally is $120, but with your discount code, it brings it down to $96. But what I want you to know, whoops, sorry. Just reaching for- uh, Yeah. Well, thank you while you're, you're looking at, I appreciate yeah. the generosity there. Yeah. Well, I, what I wanted to inform your folks is that, you know, I know $96 is a chunk of change, but consider this. I use that quote from NASA that said one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a um, thousand grams of fruits and vegetables. So based on the weight of our bag, I calculated that one bag has 551 <laughs> pounds of nutrition in it. Now at $3 a pound, that would have been about over $1,500 of vegetables, vegetables, right? And it's also 551 pounds of vegetables you had to carry home yeah. and cook. Yeah. And, and that's assuming you're going to be able to, because there's going to be, you know, loss in there oh. from rot and things. That oh, happen. oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I've almost stopped buying vegetables, quite honestly, because yeah. I was throwing them out all the time. The arugula was going yellow. The broccoli was going limp. And it's just so much easier and faster for me to, you know, pop a few spirulina or chlorella tablets. And I, and I happen to enjoy <clears> the flavor. <laughs> well, so, Catherine, uh, thank you so much for your generosity for those listening. And, um, appreciate your passion for this to bring this forward and being a small part of it, uh, sharing it with our community. And um, I do like to close things out with three questions, small hot seat, but nothing heavy. Uh, So what are you reading right now? Oh man, what am I reading? (laughs) Spreadsheets. (laughs) 
I have to admit, I, I have fallen down on my reading material um, yeah. recently. Um, uh, I used to always have a, about three or four books on the go, but I, I've been traveling so much uh, and I'm so busy. I actually, um, half of my books, well, it, they either are nutrition books, spiritual books, um, or kind of business, well, not so much business, right? Mostly spiritual um, uh, uh, or nutrition books. And we okay. got a few, a few at the, um, at the event. Um, yeah. so I, 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 I'm, I can't give you any book I'm on right now because I'm I just haven't had the time to read uh -huh, recently. That, that <laughs> so, uh, what are you listening to right now, be it music or podcast? Um, well, music. I because I'm so busy, <laughs> I just have Pandora on, and I tend to listen to um, again, sort of spiritual, more uh, instrumental, melodic or pseudo jazz. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Cause I, I love yoga and I love meditation um, and I find it soothing. I, I, I end my day every day the same way with candles and um, just, you know, some soothing music um, and sort of reflect on my day and, and my gratitude for what I'm able to do. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So last one, what is your go-to rest and recovery method? Well, what um, what I, what I just talked about is yeah. I find uh, a candle uh, light is very calming and soothing. Um, it gives you a little bit of something to focus on, but without being you know invasive. Um, and I find a lot of sort of yoga kind of meditative music with sitars or uh, or even Spanish flamingo guitars. Um, again, very soothing. So I'm all about <laughs> soothing, <laughs> and I. You know, I turn down the lights and um, and just kind of relax um, and just be with the moment. So it's it gives me a lot of pleasure <laughs> and joy and, and rest preparing. So if you do the same thing, I think the key to having a good sleep is preparing for it, turning off all your devices and giving your body a chance to uh, slow down. And I just sleep on an earthing mat, which connects me with the vibrations of the earth. And I sleep in a cool room with an eye mask for darkness. So, um, and I always have chlorella before I go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to have to start trying that one for sure. Yeah. Well, Catherine, yeah. thank you so much again for your passion project and, and um, what you're doing here and, and look forward to seeing what happens over the next 11 years. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, if the, um, Big bag is too much for people to consider buying first time because it's probably new for you to learn about algae. We do sell single pouches on Amazon for five dollars each, so okay. um, that's a great okay. option to try it. Yes, yep, and uh, then, and then come back to energybits.com and um, buy use the rest discount and just come to our website because. We have so much science and we write a really deep, rich blog every month with lots of science references. This month is about uh, collagen or November, uh, why algae is up levels collagen in every possible way. Um, so come and come and just enjoy learning. That's that's the that's the best place to start. Just empower yourself with knowledge. Great. I did. I did. Look where, look where it got me. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Catherine. Take care. Okay. Thanks a lot.